Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is something we celebrate every year as a part of our liturgical church calendar. We recognize, we acknowledge, and we appreciate the Holy Spirit working in our lives, who is that very essence of Jesus Christ living in us. And so we have a tradition here at Trinity Church, we wear red. And uh, that it indicates to us that symbolic fire of the Holy Spirit that we talked about last week in our lesson about the coming of the church being birthed in Pentecost. Today we're going to finish the fifth biblical theme that we've been working through now for five weeks. And that biblical theme is one of discipleship and evangelism. Very important for us to grab a hold of because it is the sustaining work of God through his Holy Spirit in us because of Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate Pentecost, the Holy Spirit working in us on this day too. We have looked at four other biblical things. One of those was God's creation and his desire to have a relationship with his creation. Then we saw how in the book of Exodus he establishes that relationship with the boundaries that we needed. And that carries on until Christ comes and fulfills those first covenants that he made with mankind to establish his relationship with us. When Jesus Christ fulfills those in his death, burial, and resurrection. He teaches us the morality of God in a more pure way than the law was dictated through the Jewish tradition. And what we come up with now after that was the birth of the church, which is the collective body of believers throughout the world. There is no one perfect group, but the groups collectively form the church who hopefully live under the rule and authority of God's kingdom. The church is not the kingdom. It is the instrument of the kingdom. Today, we see how that instrument reflects itself in the world around it, and that would be in discipleship and evangelism. Discipleship being that of going out and helping people find Christ as their Savior, evangelizing. And then once they are evangelized, we teach them, as Jesus taught them, to live their lives in a certain quality, in a certain way. Now, that is not legalism. That is godliness. And Jesus has come to fulfill that in us. We don't have to sit around and worry about, am I doing everything right? If we are focused on the life of Christ and his life dwelling in us, we're going to do it right. We may not do it perfectly every day, but when we don't, we have forgiveness if we ask for it. And that is what is really ultimately important. So there are some just basic things we see in this last segment of the New Testament. We see Paul is one of the best examples of evangelism. He's a church planter. He works in small groups and builds congregations. But that's not just exactly evangelism. He leads them to Jesus Christ first and then brings them together as small nuclear bodies of fellowshipping Christians. And he teaches them then the doctrines of Jesus. Now, Paul doesn't necessarily reiterate every word of Christ. He teaches it how you live it out. And that's where we saw in our Romans text one of the most pointed angles of that. He doesn't say, here are the rules, here's the laws. He says, this is it. And that's where we saw him saying to the church of Rome, hey, you know, this is a new day in your life. Change the way you live. Do it right. Don't be running around getting crazy. Don't yield to sexual promiscuity. And don't be taking stuff from people like you would have in your former days. Your life has changed. And that leads us to live a life that will represent Jesus Christ. And as I've often said, the goal of the believer is not to get to heaven. The goal of the believer is to look more like Jesus Christ every day. And we do that through a process we classically call sanctification, becoming more like Christ every day. We will never be 100% like Christ in this mortal life because we live in a decayed world. We live in a sinfully tainted world. But we can become more like Christ and should as we grow in our faith. Um, <clears throat> when Paul instructed the Christian community uh, how to share their testimony, how to live that out, how to be an example of Christ. Paul established church government, and he did that with 
especially in the letters of Timothy and Titus. He told them, here's how you set it up, and it isn't like we do it today. Not at all, especially in North America. We have taken it and yanked it way out of context. I think there's starting to be an awakening now that will change that. But what we do, even in our congregation, is not found altogether in a biblical context. Okay. Uh, Paul never taught denominationalism. Paul always taught local Christianity, local fellowship, and being supportive in the community and the subcultures that they were in because they knew that and they knew how to reach people in those groups. Did they do missionary work outside of their territory? You bet. In fact, the church in Jerusalem funded several missionary trips for Paul, if we read it correctly. Well, and then we also go on to see that he fine tunes, uh, or that the apostles who wrote other letters after Paul's fine tune that doctrine and fine tune our lifestyle and do it in the sense of somewhat of an Old Testament style. Most of all, what they really want to point out is that it is important to live uniquely different. I often say we as Christians need to be obvious, not obnoxious. But we live a lifestyle that glorifies God, and that's different than the world does. The world glorifies themselves. They want what they want, and they do it that way. The last section that we see in this particular issue of discipleship and evangelism is how to endure to the end. And that's where we go to the book of Revelation. Many people think the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy of end times because they've been consumed by interpreting it by their flesh and by the things they can see, feel, touch, and smell and taste. And there is a little bit of that towards the end of the book, but the bulk of the book there is showing us how to endure, how to live our lives in the midst of controversy, how to live our lives in a world that doesn't like us. Gee, does anybody know what that's like today? And this is how we are taught in the book of Revelation, to be that continual light, as John says through the voice of Christ, he that endures to the end shall receive the crown of life. And so we learn how to endure by reading the book of Revelation, and that is all part of our Christian discipleship and evangelism. And so we bring this whole thing to a very beautiful end, knowing that God walks with us every step of the way, knowing that Jesus lives in our bodies with us, through his Holy Spirit, who we celebrate today here on Pentecost Sunday. It is in the broken body of Christ that we find restoration for our bodies, our minds, and our spirit in this life and in the life to come. Let us rejoice as we partake together. It is in the blood of Jesus Christ that we find forgiveness from our sins and we find eternal life because of what he did at Calvary. He shed his blood and he paid the price for our sins, something we can't do. And so we rejoice as we partake together. 